Shalom everyone, this is again Amir Tsarfati. I'm here live from the Sea of Galilee. We are staying in a hotel right across from the Sea of Galilee in a beautiful place. We've had a wonderful day today touring um, the surroundings of the Sea of Galilee, seeing the place where Jesus, in fact two-thirds of the gospel took place right in front of us. And uh, it is super peaceful here and it is super calm and I know that a week ago it didn't seem like that. Uh, exactly a week ago around this time we, we still talked about the tension with Hezbollah. If you remember a week ago at 4 p.m. Hezbollah fired three different anti-tank Russian-made Cornet missiles towards an Israeli armored vehicle and they missed all three of them. Uh, missed the target. Israel deceived the Hezbollah by um, um, pretending that they did hit us. We uh, landed a helicopter. We supposedly loaded all the wounded soldiers on the helicopter. The helicopter flew all the way to the main hospital in Haifa. Uh, TV um, cameras were showing wounded soldiers taken off the helicopter into the ER. And Hezbollah was so happy, celebrated in the streets of Beirut and southern Lebanon. And, and they said, we did what we did and now we're done. And uh, towards the very hours of the evening, they found out that all of our soldiers entered the ER on a stretcher and walked on their feet two minutes later back to their units. Um, and, um, you know, th the Bible says that it, we should actually make war using the schemes of the enemy and deceiving them. And that's, by the way, the motto of the Israeli Mossad. Uh, if you look at the logo of the Israeli Mossad, the Secret Service, um, it is, in, you know, in, in these type of tricks, you should uh, make yourself a war. Um, remember how your enemy thinks and think how to deceive it. And in, that's exactly what we did. Now, um, since then, so many things happened. Israel put Hezbollah on notice by releasing information to the whole world on Twitter account and Facebook account of the IDF exposing a big um, facility that is uh, being converted as we speak into a facility that will turn the missiles into precision weapon uh, uh, missiles. In other words, turn dumb missiles into smart missiles, take dumb missiles and put a GPS system, different engines, different fuel system in order to turn them into very sophisticated, uh, uh, precise missiles. Now, you all know that um, the, the escalation on the northern border um, started um, on Saturday uh, the b before when Israel sent two drones, Iranian-made drones, and Israel basically destroyed the most important piece of equipment that Iran just sent to the Hezbollah. And that's a mixer that is mixing the different fuels and creating such fuel that will enable the rocket to fly that far and to hit targets in very high precision. Um, we destroyed the big pieces of equipment. We now put them on notice that we know where they were planning on converting those missiles and Secretary of State Pompeo delivered a message to the Lebanese government saying to, to telling them basically just so you know Israel knows where it is it's by the way um, uh, in the area in Lebanon called Baqa next to the town called Nabi Sheit and um, we know exactly where it is we released aerial photographs of each and every one of the buildings. Few days earlier, we released the pictures of the Iranian generals that are pulling the strings and are running this whole program from within Lebanon. So we told the Lebanese government, look, we know the people that are involved in that project. We know where that project is taking place. And we already showed you that we know where the equipment is stored and we destroyed a big part of it. So the, um, it's very, very clear that um, Israel is keeping 
the right to attack that facility whenever we feel that it is posing an existential threat to our nation. Alongside with that, the Iranians keep getting or being embarrassed almost every day. Not only that we use their drones, and not only that we destroyed their equipment with their drones, and not only that we destroyed th that terrorist group that were planning on ki sending killer drones from Syria towards Israel, and not only that we exposed all of their nuclear archive, we get information in the last two hours, two hours, not two days, not two weeks, in the last two hours, we receive information from diplomats that can confirm the UN diplomats can confirm that, that the International Agen Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, confirmed traces of uranium in an Iranian atomic warehouse in Tehran, the same one that Netanyahu pointed at in his UN speech last year. So everybody were laughing at him. The IAEA sent representative to that facility, after the Iranian cleaned everything, we still found traces of uranium. So the Iranians' hands were caught in the cookie jar. Um, their shenanigans in Lebanon are being exposed. Their plotting to attack Israel from Syria is being exposed. We are destroying their weapons on Iraqi soil, and we already leaked information in the last 24 hours to the world superpowers that the Houthis in Yemen are planning a major strike on Western targets in the Straits uh, um, of Bab el Mandab, which is the area from the Indian Ocean into the Red Sea. So on the Red Sea, there is an imminent threat that the uh, U.S. naval um, command already uh, alerted and that's due to Israeli um, information that was given to major countries in the area. So ladies and gentlemen, the Iranians are being exposed in Yemen, they're being exposed in Iraq, they're being exposed in Syria, they're being exposed in Lebanon, and we already know that they gave a command to the Islamic Jihad in Gaza to get ready for a major strike before the Israeli election, to embarrass Netanyahu, to, to, to in a way, present him uh, as powerless, as, uh, as someone who, who is unable to answer or protect the Israelis and answer their need for security from the south. And uh, we know that it is a matter of days before they will do something in the southern part of Israel. And we are working hard on um, basically thwarting that imminent threat. So this is the Iran that President Obama gifted billions of dollars and promised that they are no longer dealing with terrorism. This is the Iran that Israel warned the whole world from, that all they do with the money that they get from the Iran deal is not benefiting their own people, but it's actually promoting terrorism all around the area, all around the region. Iran is being embarrassed by the hour almost. Uh, Russia is pretty much uh, a little bit embarrassed w with what the, we are exposing regarding Iran. The Russians, by the way, are uh, offering Iran some other route of exporting their oil through the Red S to the uh, Black Sea. Um, to avoid and bypass the sanctions uh, because Russia needs Iranian money, Iran needs money, and uh, the economy of Turkey is also really in shambles. And yesterday, President Erdogan once again threatened the EU that if they don't pay him more money, he is going to open the gates of more than 3 million refugees and allow them to flood Europe and bring the European economies even lower than wh where they are right now. Just so you know, right now, most of the major European economies 
are scratching the zero. They're, they're, and some of them are now in negative growth, such as Great Britain and uh, even in Germany. So I want you to understand, folks, that there is a real crisis in Europe. And I've been saying that for years, and you know that. I believe that the Antichrist will rise from that part of the world because of the desperation of those people over there. And he will be delivering them a hope. And of course, he will also try to deliver peace to the Middle East and to Israel, of course. The Palestinian issue is so not anymore an issue that it drives them crazy. Now, the Palestinian Authority, as of yesterday, look, they have no money, but they decided to raise the salaries of terrorists that are in Israeli prisons, terrorists that killed Israeli citizens with explosive belts. And, and those terrorists that are sitting in Israeli prison are now going to get higher salary, higher wages. That's the money. And that's where the money goes to. So you understand that they have become irrelevant. Both parties in Israel that are running for election right now, both big ones, they don't even talk about two-state solution anymore because there is really nothing to talk about and no one to talk to. And I think that this is most likely the most amazing crisis the Palestinian movement had experienced since the day it was born. I will also tell you, and uh, I will expand, expand on it uh, at the Understanding the Times conference in Minnesota just about two and a half weeks, uh, three weeks from now. Um, on the what we what I call the Great Exchange, we're watching thousands of Palestinians leaving, and we're watching thousands of Jews making Aliyah coming back to Israel. Uh, you're seeing the Word of God being fulfilled, and you're seeing the deception being exposed, and people are no longer left with any excuse to stay, and they just leave because they see that their ideas were based on lies, deception terrorism and violence and and after so many years they still got nothing from it so they decide to leave and at the same time more and more Jews feel more safe in Israel than they feel in Europe or sometimes even in America I want to tell you something yesterday a group of Israeli students in Warsaw Poland was brutally attacked by a gang of Muslim Arabs in Warsaw and I've seen pictures they are not nice and uh, the most amazing thing, in Warsaw of 2019, no Polish person came to help them. And it just breaks my heart that uh, 80 years after the Holocaust, we still have that type of complete apathy to the suffering of Jews just for being Jews. Yesterday, in one of the cities in the West Bank, a, a Jewish man and his, and his son came to a Palestinian dentist for a dental treatment. Um, two uh, Palestinians stormed into the clinic, asked them, are you Jews? Because, you know, it could be that there are Arab Israelis that come for dental treatment. When they confirmed that they are Jews, they were shot and stabbed. It, just because they're Jews, because their answer was yes, we're Jews. So I want you to know that um, Jewish people are now sobering up to under and understand that financially Israel is in a better place even security wise they they will be more secured here and they understand that this is where they belong also this is where they can freely say we are Jews here in Israel and nobody is going to to do anything to them and I want to tell you folks that um, um, that of course brings me to uh, the other message, of course, and that's a message that I would like to give both to the Israelis and to the American people. And I know I'm, I'm speaking to people from all over the world, but hey, Israel is going to election in just about nine days. America is going to election exactly a year from now, a uh, year and two months from now. And um, both Netanyahu and President Trump are hanging there in the polls um, it seems like the public loves them but the media hates them of course the media nights 
That's how I call them. <laughs> but I would like to, from, from many discussions and conversations that I had both with American people and with Israeli people, with Israeli people regarding is, the Israeli elections and with American people regarding the American elections, I'm going to tell you something, folks. I, the Lord led me to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32. Moses was basically this is part of the uh, part of the song of Moses and uh, Moses was inspired by God he received from the Lord a very strong message for the people of Israel and uh, in a very interesting way I found quite a few parallels between the Israeli and the American situation at the moment let me explain what I'm trying to say I'll go first uh, and deal with America so you'll understand. Uh, in the last two and a half years, just so you know, I'm talking now to mostly the American people, but all, everyone can understand that, whether you are or American or not. President Trump, ever since he was elected, brought the unemployment among the blacks and the Hispanics to a record, historical low record. I'm talking about um, uh, something that has never, ever seen before in the history of that country. Um, we're, we're definitely talking about um, 5.2, I think, amongst the African Americans and 4.3 amongst the Hispanic. And at no time in the history of America, the unemployment among the minorities was so low. And this is a president who is being accused for being what? Racist and against the minorities. In fact, they, uh, they benefit from, from his presidency more than anyone else. Now, I, I also want you to know that um, he lowered the corporate tax from 35% in the time of Obama to 21% right now. He also made America become the number one exporter of energy, mostly oil and gas. The number one in the world, 13 million barrels of oil a day. Number one, you, you pass everyone. And by doing that, you are no longer dependent on any Arab boycott or Arab oil or Arab demands. That's it. They actually depend on you right now. Uh, again, with, uh, with the, uh, the unemployment, I told you about it. Um, you see that the policy of the U.S. president brought back lowering taxes, inviting thousands of thousands of companies to come back to America. And thousands more would have come if they knew that he's staying four more years. Because they're not sure, they are still hesitating. The minute he wins in November, you'll see thousands of companies more. All those who left because of the high taxation will come back. Um, the, now, I've said that about America. Let me tell you about Israel. Israel is enjoying its lowest unemployment in its history right now, less than 4%. I will also tell you, folks, that the Israeli corporate tax in the 1970s and 80s was 61%. It is 23% right now, very close to the American one. We can do better if we lowered it all the way to 20, but 23% versus 61%, you can see that Israel is, a, is, is drawing investors to come all the way from all over the world. Um, we can also see the GDP of Israel. We, we passed the $40,000 per person. Uh, this is a huge number. Israel's debt, just so you know, you know, everybody endears Sweden as the most advanced and the most, um, um, you know, um, uh, modern and uh, uh, friendly country and all the credit, uh, the credit rate uh, companies, they give Sweden triple A. That, that, that's perfect which, by the way, makes Sweden pay only $5.5 billion interest for their national debt, where Israel, for almost the same debt, pays $8.1 billion. Why? Because we are double A, not triple A. Why? Because we're Israel, we're not Sweden. That's all. <laughs> but I would like to tell you, folks, that in the time of Obama, Obama inherited $9 trillion national debt 
and he gave President Trump 20. 20 trillion dollars. After two and a half years, President Trump, now it's 21.6. It is way lower rate than it was in the eight years of Obama, the disastrous eight years of Obama to the American, um, um, to the American economy. I can also tell you that um, other countries are in debt, such as Italy with $3 trillion debt, Spain with a $1.5 trillion debt, France with $2.7 trillion debt, Germany $2.5 trillion, Britain with $2.4, excuse me, I'm talking about Britain is only $2.4 billion, Japan $9.7 trillion debt. How are they going to pay all of that? God knows. But I know one thing. I know, ladies and gentlemen, that both Israel and America have amazing parallels in the, in, in the last two and a half years, ever since Trump got uh, into the White House. However, and now comes the big but. However, it seems like because things are going so well, people are getting too spoiled. And then what happened is they are actually willing to kick the person who's in power and move on. I'd like to read to you a passage from the book of Deuteronomy. You know, the Bible is not just a book written in ancient times for ancient people of ancient civilizations. This is true today, yesterday, and forever. And the lessons we read and we hear and we learn from the Bible are forever. I'd like to read to you what Moses said to the people of Israel. Listen to this. He said in verse 7, Remember the days of old. Consider the years of many generations. Ask your father and he will show you. Your elders and they will tell you. When the Most High divided their inheritance to the nations, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the peoples according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is, is, is the place of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in a wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye, as the eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over his young, spreading out his wing, taking them up, carrying them on its wings. So the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. This is how it all started. Beautiful love story between God and Israel. He made him ride in the heights of the earth that he might eat the produce of the fields. He made him draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty rock, curds from the cattle and milk of the flock with fat of lambs and rams of the bread of the breed of Bashan and goats with the choicest wheat and you drank wine, the blood of the grapes. Now comes verse 15. But Jeshurun, Jeshurun in Hebrew, Yeshurun is a poetic name of Israel in the scriptures. It only appears four times in the Bible, three in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32 and Deuteronomy 33 twice, and in Isaiah. If I'm not mistaken, the uh, Isaiah one is Isaiah 44 verse 2. In Deuteronomy, it refers to Israel. In Isaiah, it refers to Jacob. And Jacob's name is Israel as well. But I want you to, to see, Jeshurun, by the way, means dear, upright people. God has an affectionate, has a beautiful name for Israel. But look what he says. But Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. You grew fat and grew thick. You're a beast. Then he forsook God who made him and scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. They provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods. With abominations they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons, not to God. 
to gods they did not know, to new gods, new arrivals that your fathers did not fear. Of the rock who begot you, you are unmindful and have forgotten the God who feathered you. Look, we see that when everything is good, when you see the blessing of God, when you see that God turns around things that were desperate, when you see that God answers the prayers of the people. Israel was in a desperate situation just about a decade ago, just about when we were born, ladies and gentlemen, we were on the verge of annihilation almost every single day. Today, we're the eighth most powerful nation on planet Earth. Today, we're the third most innovative economy on planet Earth. Today, Israel is leading in almost every field you can think of. And we are having great economy, strong economy, great low unemployment. We have strong army, great respect all around us from, from, from nations. And, and even those enemies are now so afraid of us. And what I hear from so many Israelis is, It's time to change. Netanyahu was there for 10 years. Maybe it's time to change. And they're willing to give the reins of the country to someone who has zero experience. He never even sat in parliament or had any government office a single hour in his life. They're willing to just take anyone else but the one whom God provided them in order to turn things around. And I am sorry to tell you folks, but I see exactly the same thing when I visit the United States. A lot of people are growing cold. They are, I guess, it's getting too good and, and eh, why not? We, we, they might not even go to vote or they might not even, you know, make any effort to make sure that Trump is going to win. Again. Now, I'm not saying Trump is God or Trump is godly. I'm not saying Netanyahu is the gift from God. I can tell you one thing, though you can clearly see that both presidents are embracing, both leaders are embracing today much more conservative and much more um, 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 biblical, uh, 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 I would say, uh, uh, maybe uh, concepts and, and, and values than the opponent. And I believe that there is going to be a massive attempt to disrupt elections and to, and to uh, have some fraud in the election. Netanyahu's main concern right now is that there will be, uh, you know, it'll be, there will be fraud in the election and he demands cameras to be in every place where people vote. Now, not cameras behind the curtain where you put your ballot, no. That is, of course, between you and God. But outside where everything, when, where you put the ballot in the box, he want to make sure nobody is, is somehow tampering with all of that. There were great, great cases in the Arab sector and in the ultra-Orthodox sector of fraud. And, and he doesn't want that to happen. And I'm telling you folks, the same danger, fraud in elections, elections fraud is also an acute danger and imminent dangers for the United States elections next year. I think President Trump addressed that last time. He might do that again. There are forces of darkness and evil that are causing people to be apathetic, to be indifferent, to be lazy, to slumber, to sleep, not to move, not to be active, not to be proactive, not to take care of themselves uh, and, and just maybe just it's time to change. Folks, um, let me tell you this. I'm reading Deuteronomy 32 and it feels to me as if God is speaking to Israel today and even to the United States today and also all around the world. Let's face it, I've, 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 I've had chance to speak with people from South Africa about the situation over there, it is horrible. What is going on in the government circles over there is horrific. 
I, I can hear that also in many other countries where unrighteousness, ungodliness, and greed, corruption, and power uh, hunger uh, is, is controlling uh, the regime, you can clearly see how a nation that once prospered can actually go bankrupt. And that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants the nations to go bankrupt so he can introduce to the world his man, his Messiah, his deliverer, his man of the hour, excuse me. And, um, and this is exactly how he does things, to cause the people to be desperate. And I'm telling you, I urge all of you not to fall asleep, not to slumber, not to be indifferent, not to be apathetic. I encourage all of you to go and vote to make sure that the enemy is not going to take over. This has to be said. I, I hope my people will listen to me. Uh, I hope people in the U.S. will... Why am I so into the U.S.? Because let's face it, you know, there are Canadians here and there are Filipinos here and there are South Africans here. But you and I know America is the only superpower in the world right now. And the person that sits in the White House is the person who is the leader of the free world and he can, he can affect what is going on in the Middle East and in Israel in particularly in a very amazing way. And you know what? The previous administration almost brought about the biggest disaster upon Israel with dividing the land and all of that. And we see what, what happens right now. We see that this is completely different. It's a person, one person who sits in one office that can make such a great difference all over the world. So I want to tell you folks that uh, all of us, regardless where we are from, we need to pray for those two leaders to uphold their power and to continue to lead. Now, of course, if it's God's will for things to, um, you know, first of all, I don't believe it's God's will, but I believe God may allow it. You know, if people choose to, to go somewhere else, God will not stop them. My prayer is that the people will not choose to go somewhere else. That's my prayer. But make no mistake, God is a gentleman. <laughs> I mean, if you don't want him, then go away. He won't make you stay. But my prayer is that you will know that you have to stay. That you will know that you depend on God and God alone. So may we remember the verses from Deuteronomy 32. But Jeshurun grew fat and kicked. When you are too spoiled, you start kicking. You don't, you don't care. You know, that, let's try something else. Let's do this. Let's do that. And in a way... You do not appreciate the goodness that was provided to you through um, the regime that God has allowed. Um, so this is it. Um, I mean, there's a lot of other things that happen, but um, I believe that the, this is a message that the Lord gave me for this hour, nine days before the elections. I'm going to give you another pre-election update. During the election day, I'm flying all the way to the Netherlands on my way to Minnesota. And I will give you an update from there, from Europe, from the heart of the birthplace of the Antichrist. And then I will give you a post-election um, um, report already from the U.S. probably, or maybe even still from Europe. Um, I also want to uh, remind you folks to tune in to... Um, Understanding the Times Conference uh, from Minnesota, Olive Trees Ministries. Uh, we're talking about September 21st. Um, it is from uh, Grace Church, Eden Prairie, Minnesota. If you haven't registered yet and if you want to come, great line of speakers. Make sure to go to olivetreeviews.org and uh, get your ticket. And if you can't make it, you may want to watch it live online. You will not regret it. We have a great line of speakers with Pastor Robert Jeffress, Pastor Jack Hayes, Pastor J.D. Farag. We have also uh, Jan Markell 
thankfully is is also going to deliver a message herself and uh, another what's her name Lori Cordoza Moore also I myself will give a message as well a message on the prophetic changes in the Middle East a message I'm, I've been working on for the last few days and uh, tune in I'm also expected to go to the Netherlands at the end of November to speak I'm expected to go to Brazil in October. I'm expected to go to Romania in, September, in January, to the Philippines in January, to California in January. February, I'll be in Miami. Uh, and I forgot what I'm going to do after that. But I want you to remember one thing. I said that before, and I'll continue and say that almost every update. The social media is already giving us signals that they will not keep us there for too long. Uh, and uh, I just want to encourage you to go online to our website, BeholdIsrael.org, and register to our newsletter and download our free app, Behold Israel, so you can get from us daily updates, weekly updates, and we are not depending on social media. I also want to tell you that uh, our 2020 tours almost were all sold out. The February tour has still few spots on the four star and the five star buses. And we do have few seats left for the November tour. The November tour is very special because it is going to be around and awaiting his return Bible prophecy conference in Jerusalem. So if you come on that tour, you'll have a whole day in Jerusalem with a conference, not only that we will speak there, but we're going to have authentic Israeli worship team that will teach you authentic Israeli um, uh, uh, worship uh, songs. And you're going to have also a local Israeli pastors that will deliver some messages as well as myself and Pastor Barry Stagner. So I want to encourage you to go online and sign up for our Israel tours. For 2020, those who've been to Israel with me and they want to do some other things with us, the alumni, as we call them, we are planning a tour to Greece and then a cruise all the way to Ephesus and to the Greek Isles, including Patmos, including Mykonos and Santorini, and of course Crete and Rhodes, apart from ancient Corinth and Athens, which are on the mainland in Greece. So this type of tour will be, um, we'll let you know the details in about uh, a week or so and the registration will be open. Uh, we limit the space because of the cruise. Uh, we can't get more than 100 people. Um, and so first, first come, first serve. Um, guys, do you want to say something to your families? Hello, Mama. Hello. OK. Um, go ahead. Talk to your families if they're watching. Tell them how much you suffer. Guys, they, are su they suffer so much. They just cleaned their mouth from the cheesecake uh, dinner. There is a great suffering here, here in Israel right now. And you know, and I always say that the biggest danger in Israel is overeating. Now, do you understand what I'm talking about right now? Okay, good. Um, what? Jan, if you're here, if you're watching us, Angie is right here. Uh, Angie, come over here. Okay. This is Jan Markell's right hand. Hi, Mom, Becky. There you Everyone go. Watching. Everyone is watching. Anyone else wants to say hello to his uh, family? All right. I, should, I would like to say happy anniversary to my husband. Happy anniversary to your husband. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, where is your husband? Uh, Niagara Falls. He's in Niagara Falls. You're here. He's there. And you wish him happy anniversary on Facebook Live. Yes. <laughs> And you're not uh, embarrassed right now? No, no, no. No, okay. Happy 40th. Oh. Wow! 40 years. Oh, my goodness. All right. Any other surprises here? Oh, wonderful. Guys, this is it. We've been online for 45 minutes. It's time to finish and wrap it up. Um, and uh, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, Behold Israel. And of course, to uh, follow on our website and the free app if you want to know what is going on with us. Let's uh, finish it with the ironic blessing upon all of you. 
יברכך אדוני וישמרך, יאר אדוני פניו אליך ויחונקה, יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you peace. That peace that surpasses all understanding, that only the Prince of Peace, who is the Lord of Peace, can give you now and forever here and everywhere. And his name is Yeshua, Jesus. And it is in his name that we pray. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Uh, all the way from Sea of Galley, and we really want to see you here behind me next time. So um, let's uh, give a last uh, round of applause. Thank you again. Shalom. Good night. God bless you. A very happy Sunday to those who are still having Sunday. Some of you are already in Australia, New Zealand, and in the Philippines, and in Indonesia, and in Singapore. It's already Monday for you. Um, and for, again, for people in Hawaii, uh, what is it right now? 7.45 a.m. right now. <laughs> hey, JD, I, I gave an update earlier than you did. <laughs> All right, God bless you and shalom from the Sea of God. By the way, uh, do we have people from JD's church? Are you from his church? I go and visit all the time. Okay, so we do have people. Uh, are you from Oahu? We have people from that island, and they say hi. God bless you. Shalom. And see you next week. And if there's something that you need to know that I, I would like to tell you, maybe even tomorrow from the Lebanese border and the Syrian border, we'll just come live on Facebook and update you so you can see with your very eyes how peaceful it is. And if not peaceful, how cool it is. <laughs> yes. God bless you and shalom from Israel. I love you and uh, thank you for all your prayers and support. God bless you. Shalom. Bye-bye.